Power it up, cool it down. Power it up, cool it down. Power it up, cool it down. Hey there, I'm Trisha Hirschberger and you're watching DIY in 5, the show where we make complex tech seem simple. This episode is part of our Build Your Own PC series, and today we'll be focusing on power and cooling options. To see the other videos in the series, be sure to subscribe to the channel and check out all our other tech breakdowns. Whether we're talking PCs, business, or the ability of hoverboards to zoom over water, most people would argue that more power is better. But that's not necessarily true. You'll want to size your PSU appropriately for your system. Too high of a load into a basic system actually decreases your efficiency and costs you more money over time. When it comes to your power supply unit, or PSU, the wattage listed is the maximum amount of energy it could possibly supply. A great tool I like to use to determine how many watts you might need is the Outer Vision Power Supply Calculator, and it's linked in the description below. You're welcome. After determining the amount of power, then you need to determine if you want a modular or semi-modular PSU. A full modular PSU has no cables pre-attached whatsoever. This is the most expensive way to go, but it allows you to only attach the cables you need for better airflow and less clutter. A semi-modular PSU has the essential cables pre-attached and is a bit less expensive. A non-modular PSU has all necessary cables pre-attached, including some you may not even use, and may lead to a cable management nightmare or not. Totally up to you. Each power supply unit will have an efficiency rating, which is the amount of power provided to the components divided by the amount of power drawn at the wall. For example, a 50% efficiency gives 50 watts to the system, but takes 100 watts from the grid. A better efficiency rating means less waste, and waste is bad for heat and can potentially damage other components. Remember back when we covered choosing the right case for your build? Some cases come with a PSU already mounted inside, and while this definitely makes the overall build a little easier, it also can limit your options. Aww. Something to think about. Speaking of heat, heat is the ultimate enemy of any system and must be eliminated at all costs. Where there is heat, there must be a way to get rid of it. Hence the importance of cooling methods in your PC. Different components will come with their own cooling means directly from their manufacturer, and these stock options will get the job done. But if you really want to cool things down and do so quietly with a bit of pizzazz, then here's where you can get fancy. You can cool your system down with aftermarket coolers, either using air or liquid. Ooh, it's a little hot in there. Let's, uh, let's get some liquid cooling up in this piece, huh? Ooh, much better. No, don't ever do that. Yep, I did just say liquid as in putting liquid in your PC. We'll get to that. Air is the cheaper of the two options, and you can choose the size, speed, and look of the fan you want to install. Some fans are designed for high airflow, while others are designed for static pressure. High airflow fans are great for cases, moving the air from the front to the back and the bottom to the top, while static pressure fans are great at pushing air in a stronger way toward a specific component or for a case that has small vents or something blocking the airflow. Whether it's for funky aesthetics, less noise, or the incredible cooling results achieved, you may be considering liquid cooling. Liquid cooling can be two to 10 times more effective than air cooling. It's super quiet and it makes your whole system look like a science experiment in a good way. People used to homemade systems using things found around the house like aquarium pumps to get these kind of results, but I'm happy to say that it's a bit more standardized now. You can either purchase the parts you need individually, water blocks, pump, radiator and fan, water reservoir, or you can purchase a starter kit or even all-in-one systems to make things a bit easier for your first time. If you're up for the challenge, liquid cooling can be a ton of fun. All right. If you've been following the series, we have now covered all the major components required to build your very own PC. Other things I'll quickly mention are an optical drive. These are not really used anymore, but they're cheap and a real pain in the butt when you need one and don't have it. A wireless card, if your system doesn't have a direct line, you can get an external USB connected wireless card or an internal component with better antennas for better reception. A Bluetooth USB adapter, another inexpensive external option. A sound card, when on motherboard audio just isn't enough. And of course, peripherals, your command center to navigate your system. Okay, that about does it. Please, please, please let us know in the comments how your build is going. And if you have any questions, I'm excited for you and cannot wait to see what you've come up with. Building your own PC is not only grade A bragging rights, it's also the best way to get the ultimate performance bang for your buck. If this video helped you out in any way, please give it a like and a share. 
My name is Trisha Hirschberger, and I'll see you back here soon with more DIY in 5.